this is a fresh Windows 10 VM I have just installed and the first thing that we are going to download is the SQL server this is the download link and it should automatically download the SQL server for us alright the SQL server is downloaded so let's open it up and let's run it let's click yes as you can see this version of SQL Server requires .NET Framework 3.5 so let's click download and install this feature for us so it will download the required .NET version and it will install it for us alright so .NET Framework 3.5 is now installed so let's click close and now we should see this window here which automatically pops up after closing the .NET 3.5 installation window now let's go to installation here and click new SQL server standalone installation and it's performing some checks to check if everything is fine for this installation looks like six checks were passed so let's click OK because there is nothing failed or there are no warnings so let's click OK and the installation continues alright let's click next and let's accept the license terms and then click next again and let's click install all right so as you can see everything seems okay here so let's click next and let's choose database engine services and let's click next and we are going to use named instance called SQL Express and then we will just click next and let's click next once again and here I'm going to choose anti authority system and then let's make this automatic here and then let's click next and here by default uh, Windows authentication mode is selected let's click mixed mode so we will have both SQL server authentication as well as Windows authentication and let's enter the password so in this case I'm going to choose this as the password because this is what is used by DVT application so let me just increase the font size so you can see the password well so this is the password for this database so let's enter that here and let's confirm the password and let's click on add current user who is going to be the SQL server administrator in this case and then let's click next and I'm clicking next once again and let's click next let's leave everything as is and let's click install I know these setup instructions are boring but but if you want to follow the hands-on exercises it's important for us to complete these setup instructions and have the lab set up so you can practice the thick client application attack techniques 
looks like this is going to take a bit of time again so i'm going to pause the video for a while and once this installation is complete i will resume the video all right looks like the database engine is successfully installed now let's click next and that's it we are done with the installation of the sql server 2008 so let's click close and now the next step is to install the sql server management studio using this link so i'm just going to download that So it opens up this link let's click download and i'm going to choose the 64-bit version of this let's click next and there you go so it gets downloaded in a moment and once it is downloaded we can proceed with the installation steps once again like we did with the sql server all right the download is complete now let's open up the installation file and let's give a double click Let's click yes. And once again, we will see a window like this where we are going to click new SQL server standalone installation once again. So let's click that. And once again, let's go to this installation tab and let's wait for these checks to be complete. All right, the checks are passed once again. So let's click OK and let's proceed to this installation and new SQL server standalone installation. Oops, we are already there. I think we clicked it multiple times. There seems to be an error here. All right, that should be OK. Now let's click install here. there seems to be an issue but let's give it a shot once again because we clicked this link multiple times earlier that could be the issue um, let's try to install this once again all right let's click ok here All right, seems like this is working now. Now let's click next and accept the license terms once again. And let's click next and click install. Once again, the checks are going on. Let's wait for them to complete. And then let's click next. And here, let's choose perform a new installation of SQL Server 2008. And let's click next. And let's choose management tools here. And let's click next. And let's click next once again. And next once again. 
as you can see we are going good nothing failed so far let's click next once again and finally click on install this should do the installations for us and once this process is done we should be good to go with SQL Server Management Studio. This installation process may take a couple of minutes so I'll pause the video and I'll resume it once it is done. Alright the installation is now complete let's click next and let's click close. So even though we are done with the installation of SQL Server and SQL Server Management Studio, there are a few more things that we need to do before we move on to the next software that is FileZilla. So now let's open up SQL Server Management Studio by searching for it in the Start menu. Start. Since we are starting it for the first time, it may take a few seconds. And we should see something like this. Now there are two options. We can even use SQL Server Authentication or we can use Windows Authentication. I'm going to choose Windows Authentication in this case because we don't have to enter anything. It will authenticate you based on your Windows session. So let's click connect and we should be able to connect to the database server that we installed earlier. Excellent. Now let's expand this databases. And if you see there are a couple of system databases but we don't have any user defined databases yet. So let's give a right click on the databases here and click new database. And let's create a new database called dvta and i'm just clicking ok and once again if you notice this dvta i'm expanding it and i'm going to tables and if you see there are system tables there are no user defined tables yet we will have to create a couple of tables and we need to insert some data into those tables for dvta application so let's create some tables I have already written the queries that we need for this. The first table that we are going to create is a table called users. So I'm just choosing this database and let's click on new query and I'm pasting this query here and let's click on execute. And if you see command completed successfully. So what that means is we should have created a table now. Let's expand this tables. Let's refresh and let's expand this. And if you notice, there is a new table called dbo.users available now. So let's click on select top thousand rows. And if you see, there are five columns here, ID, username, password, email, and ezadmin. However, this table is currently empty. So let's insert some data into this table. So let's copy this. If you notice, we are inserting three rows into this table. So let's first copy this and let's select the database and let's once again insert new query here and paste it and let's execute. And if you see, there are three rows affected. Now let's give a right click on dbo.users and select top thousand rows. And there you go. If you notice, there are three records now admin who has the password admin123 and his email account and if you see there is an additional column called is admin to decide whether this particular user is administrator or not and in addition to this admin account we have two more accounts which are standard users they don't have any admin privileges all right that's nice now let's create another table called expenses we will see how these tables are going to be used by the application in a moment but for now let's create these tables i'm copying this and once again i'm selecting dvta and i'm clicking on new query and i'm pasting this and i'll click on execute if you notice the command completed successfully so let's refresh dvta once again and expand tables and there you go 
you see there is a new table called dbo.expenses. Now with this we have two different tables in the database dbta. All these queries are made available in the resources section. You can copy and paste them into your SQL Server Management Studio interface. Now before we move on to FileZilla Server, there is one last step that we need to do. So let's search for SQL Server Configuration Manager and let's click on that and click yes. And let's expand SQL Server Network Configuration and click on Protocols for SQL Express. And if you see, we are going to use TCP IP which is currently disabled. So let's give a right click and click on enabled. And now this requires a restart. So let's click on SQL Server Services and give a right click on SQL Server Express and give a restart. All right, now we are done with the SQL Server setup. Now let's go ahead and download FileZilla Server. So I have the download link available here. So let's hit enter and we should be landed on this page and click on download FileZilla server. And once that's downloaded, as usual, let's give a double click and it should start the installation. Let's click agree, next 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 install and click on close once this is done uh, filezilla server should be started now we need to do a bit of configuration here so let's enter filezilla as the password and let's click connect and let's click on edit users and we are now going to create a new FTP user account by clicking add and the username is DVTA. So let's enter DVTA and click OK. And then let's click on the password and enter the password. This is the same password that we used for the SQL server. Let me quickly write it for you. All right, so this is already set up in the DVTA client. So we need to give this exact same account when configuring FileZilla server here. That's the reason why I'm choosing this password here along with the username DVTA. And one last step before we close this. Let's navigate to shared folders and let's click on add. And let's choose one directory. This directory is going to be used by FileZilla server to place the uploaded files. So let's choose desktop in this case and let's click OK. And let's give it write permissions and read permissions. And finally click OK. All right, now we do have an FTP server set up as well. In the next video, I'm going to show you how to configure DVTA application to connect to this server.